Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and today we're going to explore the financial app on the Casio CG50, but it's this, this app's also on our other graphing calculators, so what I do here will also pertain to the other graphing calculators. The reason I'm doing this is uh, this is a third part in a series where I'm exploring apps that are not as commonly used as our normal ones. So most of us know the run matrix, the statistics, the graph menus, but there's a lot of other apps here. If you kind of just scroll down, you'll see I've already gone through, I have a video on the Physium app, I have a video on the Equation app. So I'm trying to go through some apps that are not as often used because people don't even realize what they are and why they're there. So the financial app's a really nice app um, for personal reasons. If you are, um, you know, working with your own money, your own savings, your own trying to find out the depreciation on your car, this is a nice app to use. Um, but it's also good if you are teaching a personal finance class or a financial literacy course, something like that with your own students. This is a nice place to go because it has things kind of spelled out right there for you. So when you come into it, I'm going to hit um, execute. You'll see that it does a lot of very typical financial things. Simple interest, compound interest where you're getting interest, you know, every you know, quarter or something, or maybe every month they check your account and, and give you some interest. Um, cash flow, amortization, conversions, and if I click this F6, you'll also see that I do things like depreciation and bond calculations. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. So again, if you're personally interested, this is a great app, um, but also if you have a financial literacy course that you're doing with students, um, this is a great app to utilize for those types of problems. Um, I'm going to just focus on one of the um, aspects of this, the compound interest. And the reason I chose that is I know that in my algebra courses, when I was teaching algebra, there was a section on compound interest, right? It was kind of in the recursion section. So we have that. You can do that in the recursion here as well on the graphing calculator, but it's in the financial interest one as well. So I'm just going to demonstrate how that, how that works. It's and just so you can see how easy it is to use. So I've got compound interest, I'm gonna hit function two, and you'll notice I have numbers to fill in. So N is how many times a year are you looking for? Like how many payments are you interested in? Um, so let's say we're doing something that's being compounded quarterly. So every three months I'm gonna get an interest payment based on what's in my current value. And I wanna see what my value is in two years. So if I'm getting quarterly payments, that's four year, and I'm looking at what it is it, two years down the road, I'm going to be looking for the eighth payment. Whoops, I clicked my mouse accidentally. There we go. So eighth payment, right? So hit execute. Once you do that, what is my interest? What interest am I earning? So this is a really interesting thing to study with students. Currently, um, it's, you know, if you just put your money in a bank, you don't get a lot of interest. Um, so that's an interesting thing to explore is where are you going to get the most bang for your buck. But let's say we're getting 4% interest, right? So again, I hit the number I want to put in and hit exit, execute to set it. So PV, that stands for my present value. So what did I just put into the bank? Maybe I'm opening a bank account um, and trying to you know, work with my students to save money, right? So I opened a bank account, I put something in, or maybe it's currently got a certain balance and I need to know what it's going to be in two years if I don't take anything out, right? So let's just start with a kind of relatively easy number here, 100, and then hit execute. Um, we're going to kind of ignore the payment at, at this point because what we're really interested in is our future value and it's going to calculate that. And so the question down here, PY, that stands for how many payments a year are you getting? So if I'm getting compounded quarterly, I'm getting four payments a year. If I'm getting compounded monthly, that would be the 12. So we're going to change this to four because we're, we're interested right now in this current problem for um, quarterly payments. So you'll notice down here, I have these different things and I want the future value. I want it to calculate in, and I think I can scroll back up here. Um, in eight payments, so two years, so four quarterly payments a year, eight payments would be two years. What is the future value of my current balance, my present value of 100? So how much money have I earned by keeping it in the bank, not taking anything out, and earning interest? So let's hit F5. And you'll notice, okay, so in two years, I'm going to have earned $8 in interest. 
this is kind of startling when you work with students, right? They're like, oh my God, that's not very much. Um, obviously, the more money you have, the more you earn, um, the more interest you are getting, the more you earn. But notice that it says negative, and that doesn't mean that you have a negative value. It's simply implying that you can take out um, that $108 can be withdrawn. So that's basically what it's saying is you can take out $108. So, well, that's terrific, right? So let's exit and get back to where we were. Well, what if I am trying to save money? So this is often a reason why we have students um, put things in the bank, right? Why we have children or anyone. Let's put it in the bank and let's save until we can afford this thing we want to buy. So let's say that I want to... Um, actually have $200, right? So how long is this going to take me um, to save, right? So I want to change my future value. I want my future value to um, to be $200. So this time, I'm not interested in the future value. I'm telling you what I want the future value in. What I'm interested in is how many payments is this going to take me. So we originally gave it eight, right? And that gave us the 108. But I want to now, what's, what is this number going to be? It's going to take eight quarters before I got to the 108. How long will it take for me to get to $200? So now I want to hit, instead of F5 future value, I want to hit F1. And it's going to take me. <laughs> Wow, it's going to take me 69 payments, so 69 quarters. So if you think about that, that's a lot of years. So these are kind of fun things you can do with students is if, you know, you're only earning this much interest and you're going to get this much per month, like, and you need to save this much, how long is it going to take you? It's kind of eye-opening when they start realizing that, you know, they really need to think about how much money they put into a bank, what interest they're getting back on it. So this is just one example of how this app works. Uh, I'm, so there's lots of things you could do, simple interest where it's not compounded and um, compounded, sorry about that. So again, just kind of showing you that there is this app that's out there that you could use personally or with your students that will help you do some financial things rel relatively easy and quickly. Um, and really explore very quickly what happens uh, uh, if you spread it out of a certain amount of time or if you want to get to a certain goal, how long is that going to take you? Um, this app really makes that quick and easy.